do. And David, I think that you've uh, been a great example of that. Has there has this come been something that you've worked on? How have you thought about typing or framing or even if you want to call it branding yourself? Yeah, it it's something that's happened organically through my career because yeah, once you graduate from theater school, drama school, everyone wants to be Daniel Day Lewis, where you can transform from one role to the other and and play a range of parts that, you know, that you would never say no to, right? Mm. But even he, Daniel Day Lewis, you know, if you think about, you know, some of his great roles like Gangs of New York and There Will Be Blood. You know, he rocked a, a killer mustache, right? And you think those films were back to back. You know, I know he doesn't do a lot of films, but uh, but I think he did those, you know, relatively close to one another. And he had a huge mustache in both of them. So you have to think that, you know, in a way, you know, he found something that worked for him. Obviously, his range is impeccable. But, um, but yeah, uh, I... Uh, did have that feeling that I had a very wide range coming out of school. And I had an agent who said, look, I want you to take character headshots. So I took pictures with glasses. I took pictures with goth makeup. I took pictures, you know, like um, wearing army clothing, like, uh, mm -hmm and uh, wearing a suit and tie, you know, I did all that. And from that experience, you know, I went into it with an attitude of like, oh, this is a little bit gimmicky, you know, I don't know if, if this is uh, the type of actor that I want to be, but a few of those looks really worked for me, or one or two specifically, um, like, uh, wearing glasses and being uh, like a nerdy type, which, you know, obvious, that's an obvious type. We all know that type. Is very, it got very hot. I mean, it's um, it's an archetype that will never go away. And, you know, everyone uh, uh, knows that character. And, you know, you see it on TV every day. Mm -hmm. But uh, but for me, it it resonated in terms of myself as a person, as an actor, as uh, a castable type. And I started working more. And, uh, and this was before I had a mustache, uh, right. you know, it was in my early 20s. And I just uh, leaned into it. So I started using that one headshot of me with thick black glasses and like kind of hair that was very rigidly uh, vertical and just kind of a nerdy like tech guy in the back of the van. And I booked some procedurals, you know, uh, I uh, just, just that kind of guy. Right. And it mm -hmm. worked. So uh, from that, I learned that I have to hone in on specificity as a type because that will get me more work. And so mm -hmm. I did that for a few years. And then as an actor who likes to change my hair I've been follically blessed with a lot of a lot of strands of hair all over my head, face and body. So take that as you will. From one but, follically uh, uh, blessed brother to another. I salute. Yeah, you, yeah I, I can see it. I can <laughs> see it. Um, but um, but, you know, use that because hair really does change your appearance. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it changes the whole shape of your face and your head and uh, how light bounces off of you and all sorts yeah, of it, yeah it does so much and you know if you can use that as kind of a mask you know the way that you would use glasses you know all that stuff it it does help develop a feel of character and people see that and what people see is what they process and you know it becomes the reality of their perception of you so um so that being said, I experimented with different facial hairs and beard, mustache, sideburns, all of it, you know, and really hardcore. I had a big bushy beard for a while. I had huge sideburns like Elvis, you know, without the mustache, you know, like all these combinations on my face. But I uh, booked a job with just the mustache 
and everyone was just raving about it. And then I booked another job and I was like, OK, well, maybe I should take headshots with just the mustache. And mm -hmm. so I did that. And like I had a conversation with my manager and he's like, I don't think you need the mustache yet. You know, you're still a young man. I was probably like 29, 30 when I started getting this mustache vibe. And then I just started working more. And then he said, OK, I see it. OK, let's let's lean into the mustache. And we did. And that was uh, that was I, I, I haven't I haven't shaved since 2014. So I'm on about seven years actually to the day. It was May 28th, 2014. I did. Uh, I had a mustache when I auditioned for this part on Masters of Sex. It was a mm. period piece in the 1950s. And the casting director said, look, we love the stash, but it's got to go. It's not period 50s. And are you willing to shave? And at the time, I had nothing committed to the stash. So I was like, yeah, let's 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 work. You know, we'll shave. And um, I shaved the mustache. My scene was as a patient in a masturbation study. They were studying my ejaculate trajectory. Hope we can talk about it on this program. But here we are. But uh, it's the uh, Internet. Don't worry. Sure, it's the internet. <laughs> and um, I was happy to uh, see my lip. And uh, that was the last time I have seen it. But but since then, uh, you know, the emoji has come out with the mustache guy. And, you know, I send that in text messages and everyone's, oh, you have your own emoji. So, um, yeah, I uh, I love it. I would love to have a good reason to shave because that would mean that someone wants to hire me for a specific role. But uh, ultimately, yeah, I will go back to rocking the stash because it's uh, it's become uh, a part of who I am. And uh, that's not to say that I can't be a person without a mustache. Right. And uh, well, it is indeed yeah. authentic to you. Right. There's no there's certainly no uh, no arguing that. Uh, and you're embracing a part of you that is authentic. And just for clarity's sake, for for new actors listening or, or really anybody thinking about the type side of things, you know, we're, we're not saying that you're booking these jobs, A, because of the mustache and that the mustache is the one that's booking all these jobs and things like that. You ha still have an energy and essence behind this look that you bring. You just happen to be embracing a side of the look that you can pull off again authentically sure. that is believable um but uh, everything else goes along with that your um you know in my impression of you and seeing the work that you uh do there's a lot of innocence that comes through characters that you portray um people who maybe others think that they can get one over on or maybe can exclude but maybe there's some surprises there um there's a category of energy and essence and personality traits, if you will, that still reinforce whatever look that you're bringing to the table. If your hair changes, if your, if your facial hair changes, if you're, you put glasses on or not, you're still bringing some very clear energy that you bring as a person quite authentically that others cannot bring, right? That others who maybe have more of an edge, who, um, I don't know who might be cast more on the villain side of things or underhanded or things like that. I mean, that's a category that I generally fall into people who think they know everything and try to get something up on someone else, but are often maybe the foil because they're thinking too much about themselves or whatever. That's a, that's a character that I happen to just, I don't know, align with for better or worse. Right. Sure. But that, that that's fair. And that's useful to you as a performer because you have something authentic that you can bring to every single audition, every single job that you do, regardless of necessarily whether a mustache is involved. Well, thanks, Mike. That that means a lot to, to hear that insight. And, uh, you know, that uh, that does ring true to the the person and the actor that I am. Uh, so I appreciate that. But uh, but yeah, the, the mustache, the hair, it's just one element. You know, it's like the uh, you know, the the hot dude or the hot chick, you know, they got to work out to have uh, you know, a beautiful physique. Um, but at the end of the day, they still have to perform. So, yeah. So the, the my the mustache may be my hot body, you know, <laughs> quote unquote. But, uh, you know, they're, they're not just going to give me the job for that reason. It, it has to be a combination of preparation and understanding of the role and uh, and being responsibly 
prompt in your delivery of your audition and, uh, you know, showing up, uh, you know, you got to be present, prompt and prepared in addition mm. to having the whole package. So there's a fourth P for you. But yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I feel very blessed to have had this journey happen organically for me because I'd really never intended uh, to have it play out this way. It's just how it's happened and uh, and it's working. So thank all the forces that have contributed to, to being here in this moment um, because really you, you, you could never predict that things would unfold this way, but they have. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm living the dream that I want to be living. Thank you so much for watching. For more great interviews, insight, and more, click the next video and be sure to subscribe.